Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. He was the uh, teacher of the famous Swami Vivekananda. Everybody knows Swami Vivekananda. Many people know. But very few people know about Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa because he never went abroad. And he could barely sign his name. He was illiterate in that sense of the term. And he was a, a, a priest uh, in a small temple in the village. I mean, that's it. But when somebody asked Swami Vivekananda, if you have not read Vivekananda, you should read. They're the complete works of Vivekananda written in English. He spoke in English and wrote in English, although he was from Bengal, from Calcutta. Ramakrishna was his guru, his teacher. But Vivekananda was a very educated man. So when somebody asked him in England, can you tell us something about your guru? Swami Vivekananda said about this man who could barely sign his name. He said, uh, a speck of dust from his feet could have created a thousand Vivekanandas. What more can I say? He said. So you see the genuineness of this great person. And he started his life by worshipping the mother goddess. And then it became a reality for him. And he was conversing with the mother goddess. And he, he, he had no interest in other worldly things. Soon he stopped the worship. Somebody else was appointed. And he was most of the time absorbed in the bliss of the inner understanding. For him, it was the mother. In fact, he was very frightened of saying, I am the mother. He said, it's good to keep it separate. I love it. He, he, he even said that it's better to be the ant that licks the sugar than become the sugar, then you don't taste it. <laughs> so anyway, so <clears throat> Ramakrishna Paramahamsa then after having had his vision of the mother, and when he had his first vision, spiritual vision, he did not see the form. He saw only light all over. And he was also getting one with the light. And then from the light, he saw the mother whom he worshipped, who said, in his own words, stay on the earth. There's time. So he stayed. And uh, and this young man with a bright face, with a spark of illumination in him, was sitting one day on the banks of the river. If you go there, you can see the river there. Uh, just sitting quietly and looking up. Ah, I forgot to tell you. When he was a young man of eight years, he was one day walking in his village uh, with a bag around his neck in which there were peanuts. He was eating the peanuts, roasted peanuts, and he was just walking in the village when he suddenly looked up and he saw that the sky was absolutely dark with black clouds and a huge flock of white geese flew across it. That contrast immediately affected him and he said, oh my God, and fell down unconscious. So, you see, at that age, no sadhana, nothing has been done. <laughs> it's a gifted individual who saw a flock of white geese flying across the sky and went into a supernatural state, the samadhi. And then later on, of course, he started worshipping the mother goddess. This came much later, but he was already ready for it, right? Okay. Then, so after this, he was sitting one day on the side of the river, He's already grown up, he had had an experience of the mother, what he called the mother. And he sat there and suddenly from the boat came a, a, a monk, a very big monk. Ramakrishna was a small man, he was a huge man wearing no clothes. Now in India only the religious people, like one particular sect of sadhus, do not wear clothes. 
so it's considered a big thing yeah so <coughs> so he came uh, he called him nangta which means the naked one he came his name was tota puri he didn't know that at that time and he belonged to a monastic ancient monastic order of vedantin who learned vedanta sanyasins monks and then he saw this young man sitting with a bright face and he went to him and he asked him hey do you want to know about the supreme brahman about the absolute brahman he said uh, yeah i have heard about the supreme brahman but <laughs> i don't know but i need to ask my mother so chota puri <laughs> who believed according to vedanta this whole world is an illusion there is only the supreme brahman so he thought that his actual mother was living here maybe he's going to ask his mother you know when you take uh, become a monk you are supposed to take permission from your mother and shave your head off so he thought maybe his mother lives there because he didn't believe in all this mother goddess child goddess the it's only the supreme brahman nothing else so he said okay we went inside and came back in 10 minutes and said yes mother said learn <laughs> he was very innocent oh mother said okay do it he is a great yogi learn so he came back so this man was wondering how did his mother know that i was a yogi I mean, anyway he thought we we'll talk about that later so then he took him to a small room little hut under the tree there's a there are f- uh, five trees big trees on the banks it's still there and then there is a small room that the room is still there nobody is allowed now because otherwise all people will go in and try to meditate inside it's only this big <laughs> so he took him in there and said sit down he said everything is impermanent these are his words thought up with his words he said everything is impermanent nothing lasts therefore everything is an illusion the only reality is the supreme brahman and there is only one okay so find that he said how he said clear your mind of all thoughts and fix your attention here he, he said i can't do it it's not possible so he took a piece of broken glass and poked it into his forehead bleeding and little pain is enough fix your attention there he said okay very uh, obedient okay fix now clear your mind of all thoughts he said i have cleared my mind of all thoughts but i cannot clear the mind of the mother <laughs> <laughs> everything else is gone but the, the mother what can i do so he said i thought your mother said to learn from me he said yes then do as i say what should i do he said use your mind as a sword when the mother comes cut her into two right he said this is not po-. he said then don't learn okay he said fine so he determined himself and when the mother's image came he cut it with the sword which was a terrible thing for him to do but he decided that i should learn because i was asked to learn and this is the highest teaching in the indian scriptures so so cut the mother went now this is very interesting extraordinary he went into a samadhi immediately this man this monk has never seen anybody go into samadhi the moment you are told there is only the brahman clear your mind of thoughts it takes years to get there suddenly he lost all consciousness and he was in samadhi so he waited one hour he waited 2 hours he had gone into the highest state of samadhi which is called nirvikalpa so he waited he waited for 6 hours then he waited a whole day no movement <laughs> he said no this is not possible i've never had such an experience before it takes time to get there years usually he said okay so he locked the room and came out next day he came in the morning no movement in the same position 
So he thought there is a rule that if you stay in that kind of samadhi for over three days without food, you will not come back. It's the end. Rest in peace. So, <laughs> so he brought some food, opened his mouth and with great force pushed it inside. And when it went here, it got that, went inside. So he fed him for three days, he fed him. On the third day, he decided, if I don't wake this fellow up, this is the end. He's not going to come back. Maybe he has some work to do, which he needs to come back. So loudly he shouted, then Hari Om, Hari Om, into his ears. And then he came back. And he asked him, what do you think? He said, I don't think, I've seen it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, and he said, can I stay here for something? He says, yes, you stay any time you want. Okay, so he, but curiously, Tottapuri used to watch this young man go into the temple and talk to the mother and used to wonder, after Nirvikalpa Samadhi still? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> so, one day, Tottapuri got a very bad stomachache. Now, this is a man who has transcended the physical. But the stomachache was so bad that he could not sit down and fix his attention on the Brahman. So he decided, if this body is not good for this, it's better to give up the body. It's very easy. So he walked into the river to drown. As he was walking in, Ramakrishna saw him. Oh, sir, he said, he said don't, wait, wait, where are you? He said, I'm mending my body because it's useless to me. It's a block to the understanding. So he said, wait, wait a minute. You promise me that you will believe my mother is there? Huh? He said, well, okay. He said, your stomach ache would go then. Get rid of it. I just asked my mother, he has terrible pain. Can you help him? She said, yes. Are you willing to accept it? He said, yes, because <laughs> the stomach ache vanished. So he came back. Then he stayed for another six days. Because on principle, these sadhus, this particular sect, doesn't stay for more than three days in a place. They move. Because they feel that if you stay for more than three days, then the roots grow and you're kind of caught up. They want to be free as the wind, so they keep moving. So he stayed for months. First time he had stayed in a place like that. And then he understood with this young man who was actually his disciple but who had now become his guru. He said, yes, there are many mass manifestations of the mother, of, of the supreme being. Mother is also part of that. He understood. So I'm just contrasting between Ramana Maharshi and another kind of person. You see, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And now, there are two things to understand in this. When somebody sat near Ramana Maharshi and read the ancient texts describing this experience of Samadhi and other things, he used to say, wait, stop, stop. This is exactly how I felt. Which means he had not read that before. He had come on it by himself. And then when they read out, he said, this is what I think. And sometimes when they read beautiful uh, songs of devotion from the Vedas, you'd shed tears of joy. But he had not read any of them. In Ramakrishna's case, again, he had not read anything. But he had understood that what is inside is also outside. Just like Ramana Maharshi. Have you seen any picture of Ramana Maharshi with his eyes closed? Can you show me anywhere? Nobody has a picture with his eyes. Why? Because he didn't need to close his eyes. The inside and the outside is the same. So what is the need to close it? Yeah, he did when he was young. He closed his eyes and was absorbed. But then he realized that what is inside is also outside. So there's no need to close your eyes. Okay. The only problem is, for most people, it's good to close your eyes. So... Um, I must tell you another incident about Ramakrishna Paramahansa to settle the issue. Um, uh, 
There was a gentleman whose name was M, not this M. Um, his name was Mahindranath Gupta, and he wrote his books, which is the Gospel of Ramakrishna, uh, and the author is M, <coughs> the first part of his name. So he was a um, principal of a school in Calcutta, and uh, so the Gospel of Ramakrishna is the collection of all the Ramakrishna said and the dialogues on Sunday, because he could only go on Sundays. He was working. No internet, no working from home, no laptops. He used to go every day. So on Sundays, he used to go and sit and hear these young people sitting around Ramakrishna. Most of the people who went to Ramakrishna were young guys. And Swami Vivekananda was one of them. And he wrote down whatever was being no tape recorder. And this is the gospel of Ramakrishna. And finally, the master also acknowledged that he's supposed to write it because he would suddenly stop and ask him, did you note that down? <laughs> uh, so, now, before all this happened, Mahindranath Gupta had no understanding of Ramakrishna or nothing, no sympathy for Ramakrishna. And he used to be like, uh, in, in India there was one movement called the Brahmo Samaj, who believed that the Supreme Being is formless and uh, in heaven somewhere and you need to pray. There is one school of thought, it's called the Brahmo Samaj. So Mahindranath Gupta belonged to the Brahmo Samaj. But one day, he had a serious problem at home. All married men have. Wife got angry with him. And <laughs> so he had he got very angry and upset and he said, I'm going. So one of his friends told him, Look, uh, there is a garden in Dakineshwar where there is a temple of the mother god. He said, I don't want to hear about the mother god. Is it a good garden? Yes, it's a good garden. It's near the river. And perhaps you might find a Paramahamsa there. You know what Paramahamsa? A greatly evolved soul. Paramahamsa. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Yogananda Paramahamsa. So you will find a Paramahamsa there. He said, I'm not interested in Paramahamsas. But if the garden is good, yes, I'll go there. And then in those days, they had only those horse carts, carriages. So he got into a carriage and he was going. He saw the Dakshineshwar gardens, but he did not want to get down. He thought, I don't want to get caught up with the Paramahamsas and Mother Goddess. And the axle broke. So he had to stop. So he stopped. And he saw the garden, so he went in there. He said, God, I wanted to go somewhere else. I'll go here. And he went. There was a bench in the garden. He went and sat down in the bench. Then he saw somebody coming from there. There was a gentleman wearing a red-bordered Indian dress, dhoti. And uh, it was winter, so he was having a black jacket on. And many, if you have seen the pictures of Ramakrishna, you will see him with a beard. But in the early days, he would never had a beard. Later on, there were so many people, there was no time to shave. It was a clean shave, round face, shining face. And he had just chewed some betel nut, pan, so his lips were red. And he was wearing a red board and polished leather chap shoes. This guy was coming from there, towards M, towards Mahindana. So I asked him, I heard there is a, some Paramahamsa living here, do you know? Because he expected a Paramahamsa to be, you know, different robes. He said, uh, I don't know <laughs> what Paramahamsa is here. But if you want to have a chat, sit down. <laughs> so he sat down and he had a chat with him. We suddenly he asked him, so do you believe God with form or without form? He was stumped because why did he suddenly ask me this question? He said, anyway, no, I believe in God without form 
Okay, I said fine, that is great. Rishis also thought so. Mm. So this God of yours without form, does he live uh, in some special heaven or is he everywhere? He said he's everywhere. Okay, he's everywhere. Yes. Okay, then he said, you see there, there's a temple. There's an image of the mother goddess there. So if he's everywhere, he must be inside that also, right? Or do you want to take it out from there? He said, yeah, it must be inside. So why don't you go bow down before you go home? <laughs> he has never been asked a question like this. Where he was a professor. He thought, who is this guy now? And with this shining face, talking like a child. And he said, okay. He left, but he thought, I won't come back here. I don't want to fall into all this Paramahamsa business. I will keep away. I won't come. But then as he went home, he was still thinking about this guy. Who is this guy? And then one Sunday, all the boys were sitting around and Ramakrishna was having fun as usual. He taught with great fun. He, he, that was not a serious thing, but then people learned. If you can produce a Vivekananda from that, it must be great. So, um, then he told his boys a story. He said, uh, there was a priest in a temple hmm, who used to mix opium in the milk. There was a peacock in the, around there which came and drank the milk. Now the peacock got stuck with this milk. <laughs> so every day at that time the peacock used to come, drink the milk and go away. So the boys thought, oh, good story, interesting. So maybe he's talking about himself. I don't know what he's talking about. And then he suddenly said a cryptic comment. The peacock will come now, he said. So which peacock? But sometimes he said mad things. So they said, okay, one of those mad ranting. <laughs> In five minutes, Mahindranath Gupta, M, came. As M was about to come inside, he saw and said, Ah, the peacock has come. Mm -hmm. And as he entered, everybody burst into laughter. All the boys started laughing. This man didn't know why they were laughing. <laughs> so afterwards, he asked, Why did you laugh? He said, Because he was talking about the story of the peacock and who had opium every day. And just now he said the peacock will come. And then he said the peacock has come. That's why you are the peacock. So you must have had the opium yourself. He said, actually, a matter of fact, after I left him, I felt that I had some opium. <laughs> and he continued to come on Sundays when he had no other work in the college. And note down, this is the gospel of Ramakrishna today that we have. And he signed as M. <clears throat> so this is one. Ram Krishna Paramahamsa. And he, according to his life story, he did attain a, the highest state possible in the Vedantic side also. But he shunned all yogic powers. Somebody asked him, can you walk on the river and cross the Ganga? Because you are a great yogi, you can walk on the river and cross. He said, why would I walk? I can get a boat for five rupees. And go. <laughs> this is one way, one kind of person. 